Hey everybody, my name is Benjamin Arnaud aka Bungie and today I'm cutting Motion Box the video brother. I'm very happy to be here once again um, with you guys to develop really uh, this new tool, this new innovation, so I like to call it. And, uh, you know, it's already the fifth time I'm doing that, so very happy to be here and very happy to already have uploaded quite a lot of content. So let me remind, remind you quickly, uh, at least expose you quickly the reason why I'm doing this, um, because it's important to understand my motivation here, I suppose. Uh, so I'm... I'm willing to share as much as possible in my life because I believe sharing is key and because I believe in the next society that hopefully we can build together, sharing will be a key component. And so what I thought of is, you know what, I'm going to develop a program, not for profit, not to, for my own advantage, but for the community, for the people. And it's going to be innovative, innovative because I don't want it to be like something existing in the private domain. I want it to be innovative. I wanted it to be exciting, new, and meaningful. And so that's why I started Motionbox. So this is Motionbox, and uh, the version you are seeing here is already quite an advanced version since I started it almost five years ago already. So it's been a long journey. And along the process, uh, I thought that uh, I could share uh, the software with everybody, of course. I didn't know if I would share uh, the code right away. Uh, but I en ended, ended up doing it, and I'm very happy to announce and to say that the code for Motionbox is freely available and completely open on GitHub. So if you go on GitHub here, this is my page, you can see that Motionbox is fully accessible. So that represents five years of work, almost five years of work, that are licensed under the GPL v3, which essentially means that you can, you know, access the code with the full freedom of the Free Software Foundation. So if you want to know what are these, you can still go there uh, and type FSF GPL. And uh, I, I certainly think that you, you can you can read the license, but the license is, is a tad obscure. So what you could do instead is just. Um, uh, just read about free software. So there's most likely a page expl explaining that here, what is free software. And when you're reading that page, you'll understand that there are four essential freedom that must be preserved if uh, you want to control your computing. If you want to be free, uh, if you want to be free to use the computing, the, your computer, the way you want, the program you're using should respect those four essential freedom. And essentially, in a nutshell, the freedom to run, the freedom to study how the programs works, which most likely implies access to the source code, the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor, so I can give you my copy of that very good software so you can use it as a tool yourself and be free to do so, and the freedom to distribute copy of your modified uh, versions to others, which is, you know, if I implement something cool, I want you to have it too. So I think that's a really great model and i think that's you know really the essence of what is uh what people call quote open source unquote which is a term that i try not to use because i believe in the um ethical ideas behind free software and i support them uh which are mainly you know to improve society uh to make sure that we are good neighbors to each other and to make sure that we go uh, that we preserve a society where everybody is free to use their computer as they want. Whether open source, quote unquote, uh, focuses more on the practical aspect of, of things and on the efficiency, if you will, which is something that matters to me too, but I don't want to avoid the ethical question that are brought up by free software, if you want. So that was a quick disclaimer here, but yeah, once again, to recap, um, uh, here are the sources of Motionbox, and so you can see there's a very few commits, public commits on GitHub, because the source code has been on for uh, a few days only, a few months now already, and the initial import is, if I click there, you'll see it's, it's a pretty big one. 
Uh, so obviously I coded that for a long time before publishing the code. So it's already a pretty big project, even though when you're checking on GitHubs, you might think that there's already just a few commits. You can see my few commit was like 22,000 editions. And I guess you saw 184, uh, 184 changed files. And I think that you saw that when I loaded the page, it took a long time to get up to compile something. Uh, so yeah. But that's not it, because Motionbox uh, is only really um, the, the application that I built on top of another great project, which might be the most technical project that I built, which is Sky. And Sky, essentially, Sky Kit, if you will, is the complete application kit built for Motionbox. And this is huge too, because when you're looking, there's even more commit on this. If you look at my initial commit there, uh, initial import, if you will, uh, it's going to take a long time to load too. Well, actually, not so much. So, 803 file, change file, and 10,000 additions. So, it's a huge, huge project. It's a big project. I mean, it's not a huge project for a full team, but for a single guy, uh, it's the biggest project I've ever did independently. And as you can see, it's mostly based on C++. So, Looking at Motionbox, and I like to remind this a lot because people might get the wrong idea that Motionbox was built mainly with QML, because when you look there, you see QML. Motionbox is built mainly with SkyKit, and SkyKit is C++. And there is 10% of C++ in Motionbox. So, yeah, just a quick recap to let you know that you can fully access the source, you can get the software, so the software is right there. You go there, you click there, you get motion box, you download and boom, you're on. Three clicks at most, if you go right away to, the, to that page, one click. And the reason why I did a, a page for the download is because I wanted a very compact page that recaps everything that I do with that, that explains very briefly what I try to do, you know, um, and then lets you download, get the source or support motion box. So, like I said, I shared the program, I shared the source code, and I thought, you know what, I really believe in sharing, what more could I do? And I figured out that what I could do is sharing my whole development process. At least not the whole of it, but part of it, so that people could see and feel the way I could, and maybe it can be interesting to them. I'm only saying interesting, and I'm not saying that they could learn anything from it. Uh, it's possible and plausible that you might learn for the, from the way that I work, or that you might get inspired, because we're, we always get inspired looking at people work. But my, my main goal is mostly to share my development process to show you the way I think and, and show you the way I work. So that's why I did that. The second reason why I did that is because I wanted to communicate about the project. And so the very, f the very fact of sharing video content uh, twice a week for an independent guy while coding, explaining lots of stuff too, but coding it, is good stuff. There's, there are many reasons why it's a good thing for me to do that. Also, I practice my English. Uh, I try to get better at expressing, uh, you know, uh, my code, my worldview, a bunch of things actually. So it's good for me too. There are a whole of reason. Now, I really want this stream to be interactive. So if you want to ask questions, don't hesitate to do so in the chat. I'm reading it every once in a while during the stream so I can answer live as long as I can do that. There is also another way to do it asynchronously, if you will, which is going to the forum there, clicking there, and then commenting there. As you can see, there's no comment for now, but I created the page, you know, days ago. And uh, here is a recap of everything that we did previously, and so you can access the videos and check them and everything. Now, I don't believe that people should watch everything that I, that I record, because like I said, uh, I didn't say it today, but I said it previously. What I'm trying to do with that stream is being as real as possible. The, the key here is being real. That's my first goal. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to prepare something. I want to be real. And so if at one point I'm just thinking out loud, if the stream gets boring, it's okay, as long as it's real. I value reality and authenticity much more than spectacle, than the spectacle, than the show. That's crucial to understand that. Uh, that's what I want to do. So hopefully if you're watching this as a replay and it gets boring, you know, just seek in advance and just seek in the video and find interesting bits and, you know, do your thing. You, you decide. 
But what I like is the whole idea of being authentic about it, about, about being real. That's what I care about. So yeah, that's the reason why I'm doing it. Also, I want it to be immersive. That's the reason why you're not seeing webcam here is because I wanted you to feel like I feel. I want you to feel like you are in my seat, in my shoes right now, except I'm not wearing any, but you know, I'm not supposed to mention that. And feel that like the way that I feel when I'm coding motion box. That really excites me that you can be that you can feel for a second what it feels to be a developer, what it feels to be a coder. So for that to really happen, I know I need to be more confident while coding uh, on the stream. So hopefully this will happen and hopefully we can do some cool stuff there. Now, to go back to Motionbox, uh, I'm currently coding what I call torrent streaming. So torrent streaming is mostly uh, the, the ability for Motionbox to be able to access, load and play right away, extract access and play right away content uh, torrent files. And uh, it's a very key component. You have to understand that Motionbox from now on didn't get much traction because it mainly supports uh, really, uh, let me close that. I was preparing actually some cool new tracks for today's streams, but let me close that. You know, when you can see, uh, you, you can see that it's supporting four things. The video network really is the web. Right now, that's what it is. So I call it video network because the way I see the web is not the web. The way I see the web is a video network. Why? Because to me, and I explained it that previously, a web page uh, is a playlist. A web page is a playlist. This is a web page, but to Motionbox, it's a playlist. Very important to understand. Why is that useful? Why would you care about that? Well, you should care about that because... Um, you know, it's very efficient to access videos directly. And, to, and uh, there are no way to ever build a video browser if you cannot access videos directly. There's no way that you could traverse them. And so what makes Motionbox really great is not just accessing a single video. Actually, it's very great at that too. But what makes Motionbox really great uh, is, yeah, first of all, typing something, then accessing it, and then browsing it, which is pretty much, you know, uh, you know browsing tons of tons of tracks and browsing them vertically like like I do here but also horizontally like I could do there you know like what's related to that what's related to that what's related to that and all of a sudden you know I'm starting to explore and you know maybe I'll end up to some Daft Punk stuff there and uh yeah you know there am I exploring some random stuff here and you know exploring a bunch of things so Right now, it does that on YouTube, but at one point, I really want it to be done on the whole video network as I see it. Now, you might think that the video network is only web pages and that I'm only, you know, playing the smart guy here renaming the web, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm not doing just that. I'm also doing something else, which is, for instance, uh, torrents. I consider torrents uh, to be. Um, sources too. So the video network is a collection of sources, namely web pages, but torrents are sources too. And so let me show you that actually if you if we type torrent big bug bunny, hopefully that should work. We are we arrive on, on this. Let's see if the site answers. Hmm. Doesn't seem to work. The live effect. <laughs> so I'm not sure if, on, if it's on DuckDuckGo's side or anything else, but looks like it's a little bit uh, slow today. Never mind. Let's go to this. Oh, well, you know, actually, let's go to. Let's go to there. Oh, I thought for a second that the streaming had gone down. Okay. So here, normally, uh, if I click there, yeah, didn't get it. Huh, weird. Okay, so what if I do torrent big bug bunny? So once again, this is to demonstrate that motion box also. But yeah, if I go there, download page, uh, here you can see that there are actually a bunch of, uh, of video. I think I tried to play this one previously, but it didn't work. I'm not sure about that. Let's try it, actually. Let's see. 
I hope it won't slow down my network because I'm already uploading a bunch of stuff there, but uh, you can try it. Nope, doesn't work. So it doesn't seem to be streaming. So if I click this one, it should be working though. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> cool. So if I drag and drop that page here, so once again, keep in mind that's a web page. A web page can contain other web page. That's called a link. But a web page can also contain files. That's called a file, an MP4, a link to a file, for instance, an MP4, an AVI, anything you want. It might also contain uh, a torrent. And so, oh, interesting. So here, it doesn't seem to parse the torrent. Why wouldn't he? That's weird. I need to inspect that later. So for some reason here, the torrent wasn't passed. So I'm going to drag and drop it directly to show you for the, case, for, for the sake of this demo. But there's most likely something that I need to inspect later. So here, if I click there, uh, yeah, the torrent just got loaded. And it, didn't, it doesn't seem to have worked there. Huh. Oh, <laughs> okay, I know why. <laughs> Uh, actually, the reason for that is because this is the um, previous release of Motionbox that's currently available to the public. So I need to test that inside of my uh, development version, actually, for it to work. So let's do that right now. And let's start with some music. Let's put a little bit of music while I'm doing so. So it doesn't get too boring for you guys. And uh, for me too. So this is a good old track, MIDI track, that I personally love. Let's minimize that and yeah, let's just let's just compile this. Hmm. Something wrong happened there. Did I put some sound? Yeah. Hmm. Looks like today YouTube is a little bit slow on my side. Hmm. Weird. Okay, so uh, let's try to run this. Can I? No, I can't. Hmm. Okay. So you're working. Good. Let's try to run that again. Will it play? Should be. All right. So, back on motion box, so now, let's try again. Looks like my network is capricious today. Hopefully, I don't know if, it, if capricious is a word in English, but in France, capricious works well. Um, yeah, let's see if we can actually have a torrent displayed there. Because, yeah, important. So, big bug bunny download there. Huh, actually, there might be a bug. I think I found another bug, guys. Uh, oh no, that's actually the, the name that's messed up. They put a quote, oh, okay, to symbolize the link to the download. Okay, never mind. So it works. If I click there, so this is an important button. And actually, this might not be the, the, the final design, but the idea of that button is explore in depth that page. You click there, you go into the deepness of the page if you want. Um, so here there is already the tracks that I extracted previously. And actually maybe we could try to play one for the sake of it. Let's try to play an MP4 there. Do we have? No, we don't. So yeah, I don't know, maybe that. Would it play? This page has a as issue streaming stuff. Hmm. Let's see in the back. Cannot open. Access error failed. Oh, cannot connect. Okay, I'll have to. I'll have to check it out. Maybe the the URL is wrong. Um, so here, as you can see, it's very real and very live because it, <laughs> you know. Uh, so let's let's get, let's get there. So here, what I just did is I clicked on a playlist which was prefixed by torrent, and then it extracted it to. A full playlist. So here, what you're saying there is not a web page. What you're saying there, once again, the sound get, is crashing. You know what? Let's restart it. Uh, here, what you're saying there 
what, what you're seeing there, I'm not saying, obviously, what you're seeing there is the inside of a torrent. So that's not a web page. That's actually a track, a video of track, an AVI track, indeed, inside of a torrent. Okay? So that's pretty neat. So let me run again this player and see if it works. Okay, cool. Seems to work. So far, so good. So let me check the chat for a sec and then I'll proceed with uh, maybe further explanation or starting coding right away. So hello Psycho Coin Coin. <laughs> Welcome to the chat. I believe I know you, but uh, let's keep that a secret. And thank you for being here. So if you have any question, once again, don't hesitate to, uh, to shoot them in the chat. I'll be happy to answer. And uh, don't feel obligated to ask questions, obviously. But if you have questions, you can do it. And you can also, like I was mentioning, post them there. I'll be checking, I'll be checking them uh, from one week to the other and the next stream try to answer them. Right now, there are not many questions, so obviously I have not much to answer, but you know, we'll see. Maybe there'll be a few in the coming weeks. Um, let's minimize that. So yeah, like I was saying, and this is pretty cool, this is a torrent there. And this is another one. Whoops, this is another one. So let's extract it. And it's empty. It's an empty torrent. Amazing. Um, let me pause that for a sec. Okay, so... Here... Um, hmm, hold on. Yeah, okay. Whoops. Here, let me show you. I've downloaded a bunch of torrents. So if I drag and drop one there, for instance, boom. As you can see, it loads it up right away. So it just extracted the torrent and extracted the, the MP4 there. Now, there's another one which is there, which is uh, this one, and it can load it too. So that's very cool because you can browse your torrents very fast and you can decide which file you're going to play. So it's interesting for video file. Now, most torrents nowadays are just one single video file, but some of them actually contain multiple files. So it might be useful for torrents that contains a whole you know, collection of files. We'll see how this goes. We'll have to test it, by the way. So yeah, instead of talking too long about all of that, I, I believe we should start... Uh, reviewing the code itself. Today, what I would like to do is start the implementation of, um, what can I say? How can I say it? Yeah, to start the, implement the torrent streaming implementation, which is to be able to download the file <laughs> and then hopefully start streaming it in the player of Motionbox. That's something I'd like to try today. So let's get to it. Let me resume that. Uh, yeah. Some tracks I'm still testing there. I'm not sure if they are good for the stream, but maybe I'll click there quite often if they're not fit if they don't fit. Okay, so today is episode five already. And it has no name because I'm naming episodes afterwards. <laughs> depending on what I do, since I'm not really sure about what I do uh, every time. I don't know in advance what I'll be doing exactly. And today is... we're in June. So I believe, if I keep track correctly, and that's the 2 of June. So yeah. So if we review what I was doing previously, I created a backend to one player, and we brainstormed on it because I wasn't sure how to implement that. Because like I said, I already have a backend VLC. Let me show it to you. Uh, what happened is that if I go in the world video there, uh, the world video is this. That's the video wall. You know, when you open multiple tabs, you have a bunch of, of uh, tabs there open. That's the video wall. And here is the video player encapsulated inside, uh, embedded, if you will, inside the video wall. So let me go back there. Yeah, so the player is inside the video wall, is contained inside of it, and he has a backend, which is the backend VLC, because right now, uh, as most of you 
might know, because I've been saying it for a long time, I'm using VLC. And VLC, let me get some water here. <laughs> okay, so VLC is actually a video player that most of you, that lots of you might be using. I'm using myself. And VLC comes, is actually a player implemented on top of something really cool, which is called LibVLC. And LibVLC, sorry about that, LibVLC, um, if we get there, yeah. LibVLC is the core engine and the interface to the multimedia framework on which VLC Media Player is based. So, when you think about VLC, you might think, oh, VLC is such a great software, and it's a great software. But what makes it really great, honestly, is the library it relies on, because that library is really powerful. That libvlc is where the good stuff are happening and where all the decoding is made. And I like the analogy. I think that VLC is a tremendous player because it plays quite everything. So I think, it, I think it's a very precious technology. It's not perfect. It has its flaws. And I've seen a bunch implementing motion box, and I hope we can fix them. Uh, <laughs> while the Warcraft song is playing in the back. So yeah, I'm going to lower the sound uh, every once in a while because I don't want to be completely silent in the background. I want to have a little bit of noise because I like that. But maybe sometimes I completely pause if I'm doing deep, deep thinking, if what really matters is my train of thought. But here I'm just explaining randomly stuff, so it's okay to have a little bit of music. Let me know if it disturbs you or not. Um, so... <laughs> Here is, is VLC, and what, what makes re VLC really great is that it supports all these codecs, you know. Back in the days, we had uh, the default player, like the media player of Windows, and this player was good because it was playing a bunch of files, but then again, sometimes we were downloading some random video files on a website, and it happens not to play. So we had to download codecs and install them, and it was a messy process. Mm. Yeah, it was quite a mess. But one day, some software came up called VLC, and with this software, we had only to download the player, and the player was already implementing, uh, embedding all the codecs that you need. So what you pretty much had to do is just open the file, and it would play right away. And so VLC solved an important problem, which was uh, back in the early days of video playback, uh, you know, there, are, there was a bunch of formats and no player was playing them. So basically, players were useless because you need tons of them to do so. If you had to play a DVD, you need a DVD player. If you had to play a MOV file, you need iTunes movie player. I mean, it was so cumbersome. It was a mess. You had many different video players on your hard drive. With VLC, and I think that's key here to understand, once we got VLC, there was only one was VLC, it was working pretty good, sometimes it crashed, but obviously it was working great. And so VLC solved the problem, the codec problem for video formats, if you will. Motionbox is trying, and I certainly hope I can contribute to that, to solve another problem, which is uh, internet codec, if you will. Uh, you, could call, you could call it this way. And what I mean by internet codec is pretty much going from uh, a page like this, you know, with a bunch of weird videos, because I'm not signed in, obviously, to a playlist like that. Whoops. And so what I'm solving here is pretty much giving you access to the video source and resource right away, uh, cutting everything in the, in the middle. Why is this interesting? Well, it's interesting because for many reasons. Now, if you're accessing YouTube videos, obviously the YouTube website is fine. I mean, it, work, it works great, you can just... Whoops! Okay, it opens it in the wrong browser. Let me do something here. Uh, so if, if I open, for instance, this... Uh, in this... Hold on, does it work? Uh, yeah, just try to, to do um, a copy-paste. Never mind, you know what? I'll do that later. So if I, if I do that, as you can see here, it's pretty much, it's very similar to what I get here. I mean, it's quite the same. So, you know, for accessing YouTube, the web browser is an okay experience, if you will. Now, 
if I'm accessing a torrent, for instance, on a web browser, if I'm if I'm going to Big Bug Bunny back there where we at where we were at, well, yeah, sure, I might get to the to the torrent file there, and maybe I can download it. But I have to download it, then open it in a, in another player or in another uh, downloader, if you will, if you're using like for instance uh, something like Kubitorrent, maybe. Uh, I believe that's a thing. Yeah. So Kubitorrent. So. If I want to access a, a torrent file, for instance, I have to do that, download it, then download it through my torrent, wait for it to be over, and then play it. What I'm trying to do with the current torrent implementation is go straight to the video file, to the video resource, and stream it right away, if the bandwidth makes it possible. And if the bandwidth doesn't, because we need to think, to, <laughs> we need to think about people who have a slower bandwidth, well, then Motionbox should say, you know what? I'll be downloading, downloading it in the back while you watch those cat's videos in the meantime. And when it's ready, I'll say you, oh, the file is ready. Now you can stream it. So the whole idea of Motionbox is streamlining the access uh, to video content. And here, as you can see, I can access very fast uh, content. Ooh, actually, yeah, that's normal. Yeah, the Vimeo implementation is broken on the current release of Motionbox, but I'm releasing a fix soon. So hopefully at one point I can, I can streamline my fix process, by the way. So let's go back to the, to the music here. Whoops. Okay, I messed that up. Never mind. Uh, let's go back to the Motionbox uh, production player, if you will. So what's really cool about that is that you can do that. Uh, you can you know, just access to the search result right away, but also the channels right away. Boom, one click. Now, let me do the same here, okay? So, to be completely honest, I need to, yeah, I need to start from YouTube. I could have started from here, by the way, which is even faster, but here I'm typing StarCraft 2, okay? If I, if I successfully type it. Okay, StarCraft. I typed StarCraft, so let's keep StarCraft here. You see a bunch of results, just like you see there. Cool. Now, maybe I want to see the channels, like I like I showed in Motion Box. I just click there, and boom, I get them. And not only the channel, but the content of the channel right away. Now on on YouTube, okay, maybe I want a channel, so let me filter them. Oh, channel, channel. Okay, let's click there. Okay, there's a channel called Starcraft. I'm not sure what's in there. Let's click there. Oh yeah, but that's not the video list I want. Let me click there. Okay, that's what I want. So as you can see, I clicked a bunch of time before going to the videos, because before going to what I really care. I don't care about the description. I don't care about the global page. I care about the damn content. And it took me five clicks uh, or so. In Motionbox, it's only one. And that's for a single backend. Now, maybe I want to see the Daily Motion channels too. You see a beautiful empty StarCraft channel. I mean, it's very useful. Well, let's do this one. Version StarCraft video, very useful. Now, if I wanted to do, do the same here, I have to type Daily Motion, click there, then click StarCraft. You know, once again, very tedious process. Channels there, yeah, this should be this one. Okay, yeah, no, I don't care about that. I want the history of videos there. Yeah, but I want all of them. Okay, okay, you know? It's a very long process. And so for single video access, Motionbox is already better. Now, that's not its main goal, but it's already better for that. You know, passively, if you will. And same goes for Vimeo, which hopefully is fixed in that version. Yeah. Now, imagine, imagine another scenario. I want to play that video because Snud versus Sport seems very cool. Look at these guys, I mean... But maybe while I'm playing it, I want to access another one. I want to browse the related stuff here. So there's a bunch of related stuff, as you can see there. Um, and maybe there's one that interests me. For instance, I, I could say, oh, okay, I like this player, Nerkio, for instance. I'd like to find more related results to this one. So here, I'm just going to click there, and there goes all the related tracks to Nerkio versus Sport. And if I want to play a video, this one for instance, I play it right away. 
And when I'm done playing it, as you can see, I still have my related list there. And I go back to the first one. Frame corruption here, fixed most likely in the, in the next ver VLC version. Since I'm streaming, maybe, they'll, maybe you'll see a bunch of them, even though I'm on the fiber optics there. So there shouldn't be much of those, but you know. And if I get back there, as you can see, it resumes the video where it was at. Now, let's do the same thing on YouTube. <laughs> okay, let's see how, how, how it would work. So, researching StarCraft is fine. Okay, I'm clicking there. Now, first of all, the video is starting right away. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I don't want to play it. But, you know, let's admit we want that. So, yeah, let's see. I want to see the related tracks for this one. Let's see I'm playing the video. Oops, let me lower the sound. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing um, the related tracks for this one. Let me click on it. Actually, let me open a new tab because I don't want this video to be closed. I want it to be played. Then, all of a sudden, the new tab opens. This one is still playing. I need to click there. No, hold on a second, I need to pause it. Click there. I don't want to play that video, I only want to browse later tracks. Okay. And there. And once I'm done, I can finally, you know, play the video. And you know what? I want to go back to the first one, so I need to, 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 to hit pause there. Go back there. Play it back. So as you can see, the browsing is completely inefficient. It, it just does not work. Now, you might argue that currently we don't need that, because most people are watching video vertically. But imagine if you have a player that can access a bunch of different backends horizontally. Uh, imagine you could play um, a movie while you're playing, while you currently have another file playing and switch from one to the other. It becomes really useful. For instance, here, look at this beautiful corrupted frame. Amazing. So, for instance, here, I don't know, maybe... Um, you know, maybe I wanna I wanna play the Witcher soundtrack, for instance. I don't know if it's a thing. And maybe I'm currently playing my cool soundtrack there. Uh and uh oops, actually, let's go back to the corrupted frame. That was fun. And maybe, you know, in the meantime I wanna watch uh cool StarCraft 2 games, if it's if it's working in you know, a good enough. Uh, you know, I can switch from one to the other with just one click. One click, and I have three of them. Now, I could open eight of them, and maybe I'll be able to do more in the future. Currently, it's capped at eight, but I can have as much as eight video files running in the same time, at the same time. And so, it's very useful. But I digressed a lot, and it's been already 30 minutes or so, that I'm talking about it, so I'm going to focus back on the development process there, but I really wanted to express that. Now, one last thing with which I want to explain is, and then we'll stop, is, I don't know, if I tap Witcher 3, for instance, I never tried that, so it's live. On the video network, we'll see what that happen, what happens. Actually, there's a bunch of YouTube tracks, which seems to be private. Hmm. You know, I'm just discovering here what happens. So yeah, empty playlist. What about IGN? Yeah. So here what you're saying is very weird name file. Actually, let me close that. Uh, and let me change the sound here because it's weird. <laughs> okay, so here what you see is an MP4 file. So here what Motionbox is pretty much doing is it's extracting the web page and saying, oh cool, you know what? In that web page, inside that web page, there are links to native video files. So that's another thing that Motionbox support, and that's it's hard to do in the browser. If I go in the browser, I might show you that we might be able to see that at one point there's this file, and that maybe if we copy paste it in the browser, it will start playing it. But it's tedious, and it's, and it's not supposed to work that way, because in most cases, you're supposed to start a player uh, at the base case, in the base case, a JavaScript player, worst case, uh, a Flash player, and then it's going to access the video file, maybe display a, a beautiful ad before it does so, because keep in mind that when you're playing a player embedded in a YouTube page, you're not playing the video, you're not playing, you're not controlling the player. The player controls you, because the player answers to Google, answers to YouTube, and decides whether you can still play it or not. Uh, the, the code that runs in that player works for YouTube, not for you. The code that runs in Motionbox there works for you 100% of the time. When you're playing a video, 
and when you're starting it and when you're seeking in the video uh the player as it's very important to understand that the player is working with your best interest in mind at all time it's accessing the file directly and it's not answering to anyone else but you when you're running a video there the player might be doing tons of stuff sending information to google uh you know acknowledging whether you can still play it or not loads of stuff you have no idea you have no idea what it does in the background uh and so actually i don't have either because i didn't dig much further but i know that this player does not is not controlled by the user but by the maker of the player who did a javascript player for youtube and so it's mostly working for youtube which is fine because youtube as they present themselves the video service so they decide the way you watch their videos now it's your freedom to install a tool like Motionbox that access the videos directly because you should be free to decide what you do with the data that you find on the internet. Uh, that's one of the essential freedom. They are free to have a web page that functions the way they want, but I'm free to display that web page the way I want in the tool I want to use. That's an important distinction to be made. That's an important point to be made. But I digress too much. Let me stop this. Let me answer a question. A few questions, if there, I, th I believe there's one in the chat because I glimpsed at it a second ago. And then moving forward. So let's close that. And so as a reminder, yeah, what you're seeing here is a native file. So that's really cool. It's not some YouTube or anything. It's a native file on the website. And as you can see, yeah, it's, it's pretty decent quality. It's pretty good. And in the coming releases on Motionbox, you'll be able to do right click and save this to my hard drive which is cool if you want to watch it uh, when you're not connected to the network because one of the key when, because one of the key components of motion box is what I call motion freedom and motion freedom is not just a sexy word the idea of motion freedom is that you should be free to access and to play videos the way you want and part of that freedom is obviously to play them when you're not connected to the network because if you lose motion freedom when you're not connected to the internet what's good it is what what good it is it's good only if you can take the freedom with you and that freedom means that if i want to download i don't know 10 video files and keep them with me when i'm on the road i should be able to do so but anyway uh let's answer a few questions actually the two questions that are on the chat psycho coin coin <laughs> can we browse local videos and switch between my file and a youtube video okay so thank you very much for asking that. Actually, we can. So let me demonstrate it to you. Uh, here, there's uh, an icon, which is, uh, you know, uh, the mostly the, the icon that you'll find on any playlist and on any folder. If you create a playlist here, for instance, that's the worst name ever for a playlist, but you get the idea. Uh, <laughs> if you create a playlist there, you get a button. Oh my God, a shiny button. You know, it lets you rename, delete, and do a bunch of stuff. For a place like that, it's pretty simple. And you could move to, yeah, a new folder if you want to do that. I could do that, but I don't want to do that. Anyway, here, uh, as you can see, if I tap, if I tap here, uh, if I go there, there's also uh, a button there. And there, there's a button there, which is supposed to concern that folder there, that folder view. Now, in that, in that button, you can decide to open a file, a folder, or clear the cache. That's the current implementation. Now, I'm not sure it's 100% final. By the way, the whole design that you're seeing there is work in progress. If you have idea to make it better and to make it simpler, I'm really interested because I've been working for a long time on this. And so sometimes when you are too close from what you're doing, you lose objectivity on your work. You lose grasp of reality of what others might be seeing and might be experiencing. So. If you have feedback, once again, don't hesitate to, you know, you could post it as a reply there, you could post it in the chat, or you could create a new thread there, or, you know, just tell me on Twitter or on any way you want, really. But, yeah, if you have ideas, don't hesitate to, to ask me. Actually, a guy uh, sent me a complete feedback on Twitter uh, a few months ago, and it was really cool because it made me improve tons of stuff, really, that I didn't think about because... It's always great to have fresh eyes to see what you're doing. But anyway, let's get to the point and uh, let me hide that for a sec while I browse my hard drive because who knows what's in there. And, um, <laughs> well, I know, but... 
not what you're thinking about anyway <laughs> by the way so um let me let me get there for instance yeah cool okay so here i'm going to drag and drop uh, a folder in motion box because drag and drop is supported in motion box and that's very useful especially when you're in mini mode you can drag and drop any video file from the browser directly to motion box start playing it it's very cool anyway if I drag and drop that in motion box, as you can see, what happened is that it parsed the video folder. So here are local video file, okay? Local video file, so I can play one. As you can see, it starts really quick because it's local. You know, and it's, it works fine. And, it's, and that's a pretty big video file here. Now, it also parsed the, the all the folder inside of it. So as you can see, there's capture there, there's storage, test, videos, videos, you know, a bunch of videos. And so, yeah, for instance, I mean, we could play, uh, yeah, Daft here, for instance. And um, yeah, and so your question was about so, okay, can we both look at videos? So I'll answer that and switch between my file and a YouTube video. Okay, you can do that. So here I'm playing uh, Daft, for instance. Let me add it to my playlist back there, actually. So it's now Daft is here, so I can play it back. Uh, let me add another local file. Another one there, you know. And then let me go back there. And you know what? Let me add 35 minutes of Witcher gameplay, which is, uh, yeah, which is just The Witcher. Now, if I go back to here and I type browse again, it resets my browsing and I can, like I showed previously, browse the entire web, which is essentially uh, happening through DuckDuckGo right now, but hopefully at one point it will happen through other search engine and maybe some funky stuff, like things like uh, maybe I'll implement uh, an accessor for ZeroNet, for instance. Uh, for those of you who don't know this one, it's uh, pretty much a decentralized website system and so that interests me for motion box because since i'm currently implementing torrent having a torrented um web working in the background if you will is interesting especially to store your playlist your public playlist because you don't want to pay a very expensive server to do a very expensive server to do so So yeah, if I go back there and click on IGN, maybe I want to take an IGN uh, native video file from their website, for instance, and put it there. You know, maybe I want to do that. Why not? By the way, if you click related on that track, that's very cool because it shows you, well, that's very abstract too here because the <laughs> title are very generic, but it shows you all the native related tracks that we found on this website. At least it should do it. Yeah, that's what it does. And so here's an example of how related can work for other things besides YouTube's tracks and besides the tracks that you might find on the tree supported backends. But anyway, so if now I play this and then do previews, then it's connecting to YouTube and playing YouTube. And if I do next, connecting to my hard drive again, you know, you get the idea. And then connecting to a freaking native file. On the IGN website. So as you can see, without noticing, we just browsed the, the we just browsed video for the first time. We went from the hard drive to YouTube, all the way to the hard drive, back to the hard drive, and all the way to a native file on IGN with the supported video files that, that Motionbox currently support. Now you could imagine, and what and, and that's what's really cool. Now I could also add, for instance, let me show you that. <laughs> This video is going to be very talkative, I know that. Okay, so, Big Bug Bunny, uh, I could do that, look. I could do that. Actually, I hope I can do that very soon. So here, I'm searching for a torrent, a Big Bug Bunny torrent. And here, I happen to find one. So what I could do with that, just loaded the torrent, what happened there is that we've accessed the web, then Pitch Blender, then uh, downloaded the torrent file, then extracted the file. Lots of stuff happen in the background. You, you have, a, I mean, lots of complex stuff happen in the background without you noticing while you were just clicking the stuff. 
And here what I will be able to do very soon, and I hope it will work very well, is just drag and drop the AVI there. And then we'll be able to play this AVI file which is contained inside of a browser, without, uh, inside of a torrent, forgive me, excuse me, it, without thinking about it. We'll be able to, yeah, we'll be able to um, play it, play a torrent, fi uh, uh, a torrent video file, a file inside of a torrent without thinking about it. That's what's great about it. You have a playlist that is going to access a bunch of video sources and browse through them. And really, that's what motion freedom is all about. Accessing all the video files of the internet and browsing through them. And going back full circle, back to what, where I was with, with VLC. VLC solved a major problem, which was the codec problem for the video files. I want to solve another problem which is the internet codex, which is making sure that we can access video resource directly on the internet and on our hard drives, like you asked, directly. And so that's what Motionbox wants to solve, the problem that, wants, that Motionbox wants to solve. And hopefully it's useful and hopefully it will become more and more useful as I support more backends and as people can create their own with a very simple uh, protocol and so on and so on. So, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what we're doing here. And so, actually, let's reset. Let's reset the, the browser. There we go. Now we're clean. I like the way that I can reset the browser really quick. Don't do this at home, kids. Uh, <laughs> just don't do this at home. Okay, so let's close that. Um, okay. Hmm... So let's close that. Yeah, don't need that anymore. So I'll do a quick break, and when I'm back, we'll start coding a bunch of stuff. Thank you for being here. <laughs>
And I'm back. Let me lower that a little bit. So, thank you very much for being here and uh, supporting uh, me uh, on the stream while I while I code uh, motion box live, while I try to start coding indeed. Um, so, you know, I'm very new, like I said, in this, uh, in torrent, in a torrent streaming. <laughs> I'm new in torrent streaming, but I'm also new in live streaming. And so, if you have any feedback on the, the way I work, the way I do, don't hesitate to tell me. Um, even if it's criticizing stuff, I mean, we only learn by failing. And so, I've been learning a lot by failure these days, the last, the last month, you could say. And I've been learning tons because, uh, for instance, I've realized that, you know, um, the communication process I had on Motionbox was completely off. And so, so that nobody was paying attention because I was hoping that people would come to my content uh, where my content is supposed to come to them. And so, in a nutshell, uh, the communication on the internet changed, switched from a model where people go to forums or stuff like that to get the information to a model where the information comes to them. So they don't have the occasion, very rarely, actually, to go to the content. But uh, if you still do the effort to go to the content yourself and to search new things and to discover and to explore the internet, I mean, there's a lot of gems to be found. And one of these, which I found and actually put the links there, is this guy. Uh, who implemented pretty much what I want to do in Python. And Python is a pretty respectable language. Um, that's maybe the best scripting language, you could say, even, if, even though I didn't use it much. And even though JavaScript ain't that bad, I'm using it. I'm using the ECMA standard on Motionbox. But uh, yeah, so this is one of the gems you wouldn't find without, uh, without exploring a little bit the internet. But uh, oh, by the way, yeah, that's not this one. That's not the Ben code I want to access. That's this guy here. This guy did a very uh, useful and interesting work on how torrent streaming worked. And I already went through that in the previous stream, stream not string. So you can check uh, the previous video if you want, but pretty much, you know, explains how it happens and, you know, really draw um, the current status of the technology doing it. and. Surprisingly, there is no, to my understanding, beside a stream, which is doing it in a weird way, there are no, there is no C++ slash C implementation, low-level implementation of torrent streaming, which is a shame because, I mean, it demands quite a lot of bandwidth and quite a lot of, of um, performance to be, to be done well. So hopefully we can do that on that stream. Let me lower the, the volume here. Yeah, like that. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to be on two so that I can imagine what you're hearing. Okay, that's good. So, let's go. Let's go for real this time. Um, so, yeah. June 2, 2006. Um, this is this is backend to one player. And backend to one player is the backend that I'm going to put there uh, to replace backend VLC. This is our new backend, guys, and you know it's going to be able to support uh, torrent, which is cool. So, I thought about 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 um, the way to properly implement it and what I've decided to do currently. And maybe that's not the best uh, the best way to do it. But what I decided to do was to uh, pretty much implement backend torrent as a, a, a backend that imp that encapsulate another one, namely VLC. Maybe that's the way I'll end up doing it. Maybe I'll end up doing it completely differently, but that doesn't really matter because what matters is exploring uh, what's practical and what's possible to be done before deciding the final design. Design can change at the very last minute. Still, you've learned a lot and you can use that in the new design. But anyway, let's... Let's link against libtorrent to be able to start a torrent at all, to be able to, yeah, to access them. Uh, so to do that, we are going to draw inspiration from the, 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 
the, the, the episode zero that I did of that stream, which was called Deep End. And in this one, um, what I did was pretty much testing uh, the Deep Torrent with a few samples. And uh, making sure that I could encapsulate it inside of Qt. Use it with my library. So if I drag and drop that here, as you can see, we need a bunch of library there. We actually need boost and we need we need deep torrent. What you're hearing in the background is a great soundtrack from a great game called Night of the Old Republic and this game is really memorable and I try to play it again and very glitchy these days and uh, it crashes a lot unfortunately but I think there's some patch to fix it. It's a very good game and it has a a tremendous universe that feels like Star Wars while being new. It's a very, very cool game. But anyway, I think it's better than Mass Effect. <laughs> Huge troll here. Uh, I haven't played much Mass, Eff Mass, Mass Effect, so I couldn't say, but... Okay, so... Let me drink a little bit of, co of coffee here, and then we'll start doing stuff. <laughs> That's what we're here for, aren't we? So... Yeah, um, I mean, let me see how I do that for SK Media. I believe I'm, ad I'm adding it at the bottom there, yeah. Okay, am I releasing? Yeah, in release in every case. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, it would probably look that way. First the boost library, and then the torrent. And then those two, these two, which are um, pretty much the library we need for Windsocks and not Windsocks. Uh, we probably need these only on Windows. So I believe, because they are MS and WS, so. Um, let me think about that for a sec. Yeah, actually, why don't I do this? Because since it's the same, hmm, we could do something like that. Something like that. Actually, adding that for both release, debug and release or release. Um, yeah. Okay, and then we can do something like this. You know, like. Mac X, except it's not Mac X. Win 32. We can do something like when it's leap 32, when it's win 32, please add me those, these, these two that I need. So I'm not sure what these two are doing, so maybe I should Google it. One of the key thing is when I'm working and when I'm coding sometimes I end up implementing something that works but I don't understand it. Maybe it happened to you too if you're a coder. You code something and it works but you don't really know why. <laughs> you don't understand it fully. And the thing which really matters to me is when I code something that I don't completely understand where I don't understand all the pieces I stay there until I understand it really well before proceeding. And the reason why is if you want to scale when you're coding, if you want to be able to scale on the code you've created, you need to be able to scale technically. So the code itself needs to be scalable if you want. It needs to you know, work for one cases and for a thousand cases of the same action, specific action. But you also need yourself to scale. If you want to scale as a coder, on the code you've produced, you need to understand what it does thoroughly. If you don't, you're not going to be able to iterate on it and to make it better. So understanding your code is maybe more important than making it work in the first place. Well, except when it's like 22 hours in, at, at, uh, of, the, of the night and you're supposed to, to give the project to a client or at school or anything like that, then you have no choice. You don't understand it, it works, so 
<laughs> let's give a shot there. But when you're doing long-term project like Motion Box, you really care about understanding what you do. And so understanding what you link against, uh, you know, is useful. So here, we can see that I'm using Microsoft WinSock, which is probably related to sockets, and which is probably, yeah, Windows sockets too, uh, which is probably useful for a library like Torrent because, I mean, it's a networking library, so you could imagine that it's going to connect between different peers through sockets, which sounds, you know, plausible. Um, what's this one? Yeah, so that's another one. Um, so, I'm not sure why I need those, these two, actually. Um, but I do. So, WinSock. Um, yeah. This should be related to networking and sockets, too. So, you know, when testing against LibTorrent, I realized that I needed these two. But maybe... I don't know. Maybe I'll need... Um, maybe I don't need these. Or maybe, you know, I'll have to review that. There's a question there, does this PRO file is similar to a C++ make file? Okay, very glad you asked that actually, because I, I think I didn't explain that. I didn't explain that. Um, a PRO file, a PRO file in uh, Qt, in the Qt, uh, f with the Qt framework, if you will, is pretty much a specification that is going to generate a make file for you. So it's supposed to be a multi-platform make file, if you will, make f uh, mock make file that you're going to define and then uh, Qt is going to define proper make files for you. And actually, I think I could show you a generated make file. Uh, maybe. Let me see. Yeah. Here's a generated make file for Sky, for instance. So here, as you can see, looks familiar? Yeah, it should. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a make file, just like uh, we used to, I used to write them at, at school. And it's very useful to understand how it works, but as you can see, it can get a little bit messy, you know? You know what I mean, uh, when you want it to be complete and work fully. So I don't really need to care about that. In fact, I don't need to care about it at all. What I need to care about, what I need to care about, sorry, is about writing these. And I think they're cleaner. Uh, you have to learn a bunch of defines. A bunch of keywords there but once you did it's uh, more straightforward you're welcome so yeah that's a make file generated by qmake which is what's called before building with gcc qmake is called and qmake does a bunch of things including generating make files but it also goes through cpp files in your project and replaces a few things that the C++, the C++ does not handle by default. Or replacing, you know, generic tags, like the Q object, for instance, is going to be replaced by a bunch of stuff. And it generates pretty much a make file and CPP files out of those, out of these. Um, you know, so that you can forget about these and focus on writing the good stuff. While keeping the, the low level C++ capabilities. But yeah, okay, <laughs> let's focus. Uh, so here I've also implemented C++11, but I don't think I need that. Uh, actually, it was needed for a sample, but we could use it, but I'm not currently using it uh, with my with Motionbox. I'm, I'm going most likely to switch to it when I'm switching to Qt5 fully and when I implement the send graph, uh, the Qt Quick 2.2, uh, 2.0 uh, QML, Quick view, cute quick, 2.0. Uh, or 2.x, I'm not sure where they're at currently. So yeah, we, we, sh we should be able to link uh, uh, against that. So for that to happen, we need to make sure of a bunch of, of things. We need to make sure that there... Uh, so yeah, as you can see, I already have VLC and core and everything. So how do I, how do I get these there? Well, you I could copy paste them or I could do a script that does it for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is sounding fine, but a little bit disturbing. Let me switch it. Yeah. Actually, Jeremy Soul soundtrack, most, in most cases, they are very, very subtle, and so it's good for an ambience. And we need that currently. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty much using a configure sh file right there. 
And what that does, it's pretty much going to go to an external folder and copy the dependency directly inside of the project project folder so that you don't have to worry about them. If you want to build yourself motion box, for instance, you only have to get this dependency and get them in a dependency folder, which is the third party third party folder there. Here is everything that motion box is depending on on Windows. By the way, if it's useful to you, I could release a package on the Omega website that you just have to download so you get all the dependency right away and so you can, you can configure and build Motionbox out of the box just by calling configure and then build and boom, you're done. I think that could be useful for people who want to build it. Right now you have to download them by hand, which is a little bit tedious and honestly, I don't like that. I would like to be a package that people download so we make sure that everybody has the same dependency. But since there are very few contributors, if none, to the Motionbox project. By the way, if you want to contribute, uh, the code is on GitHub, but... Yeah, so here what we need to do is obviously... Um, most likely going to be... to add libtorrent there. Um, so, let me see the syntax of the libtorrent uh, dependency to make sure that we have the proper one. Um, so, yeah, I think that was in my desktop there. Once again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to put them in the chat. I'm reading it. So it's like little voices in my head, like uh, while I could. So yeah, libtorrent is written like that. So I guess we should read, write it this way. So we have two dependencies there. We have... I'm going to create them. First, we have libtorrent. Torrent is written with two R. Very important. Um, by the way, yeah, hmm, yeah, so libtorrent is there. Now we need, we also need the boost dependency. So as you can see, I have a few dependencies on the Motionbox project, but it's okay because they are quite low level. And so even though Motionbox might end up being a tad on the bigger size in terms of binary. And even though I would love it to be more, um, maybe to remove a bunch of dependency, I mean, as long as it works really efficiently, I don't really care that the binary is a little bit big. It's okay. It needs to be, f it needs to be efficient and fast. That's crucial. But as long as it works well, I mean, you know, it's okay. So here, what I'm going to do is simple. I'm going to include a lib folder, you know what, maybe I could... Yeah, I need to include the version of it. So the version of it, if I'm not mistaken, let's go check right away. I think the, the latest version is 1.1.0. Yep. That's what we need there. So yeah, I'm pretty much... The way I'm doing it is pretty much doing it like this way. So that I can switch dependency on the fly on my configure file if I want to test different stuff. You know, it's useful. Uh, so here, uh, there's a bunch of things we need. We need the, the library. There it is. As you can see, 12 megs. Pretty big. 12 megs. We need... Um, yeah, we need the includes. So the includes are there. So let's put them there. Includes. And that's it. That's what we need. Now, we also need boost. Because, yeah, boost is useful to libtorrent. So, for some reason, and I mentioned it on the website, um, for some reason, let me see if it loads there. I did a tutorial for those of you who would like to build libtorrent on Windows. I don't know, maybe for a project you have, you would love to build it. And since there are no binaries available at the website, you have to build it. And in order to build it on Windows with, with MinGW that I'm using there, I had to, to hack. I had to make a hack, which is using two boosts, because for some reason, the builder that comes with boost, that, that's called BJAM, that... Uh, libtorrent is using, for some reason, the 
one crashes at the end on the link. I'm not sure if it's on the libtorrent script uh, file or if it's on the boost, uh, if, it, if it's on the libtorrent side or if, it, if it's on the boost side, but nevertheless, I had to do that. And I also that, and, and I also had to do for some weird reason, weird reason to rename an object, a generated object by the compiler from from STP stream to STP stream. Uh, from, us, from UTP stream to UTP stream. I had to do it. Which is weird. So I did that previously and maybe in the coming stream I'll show you how to build it. So I already built it. So this works. It's pretty straightforward and it works great. And so the current version I'm using is a boost 150. So we're going to put that there. 1.50 Oh, is it that? Yeah, I believe so. There we go. Okay. Whoop. Um, need to clean my desktop there. Okay, so here. Um, yeah. So we need a bunch of stuff there. We need boost includes, which are there. Now, <laughs> I have an issue with these, and I'm going to show you why. Yeah, 100 megs of includes. I think there are other files I need to check. I'm not sure. I don't think it's only... There's got to be something else. Seriously. Yeah. I'll investigate about that later, but... Yeah, for some reason, it's very big. Um, so we need all of these three libraries system random and chrono uh yeah um yeah system random chrono we need those three and we need boost this one this guy here so this is these are all the dependencies that we need in order to build a proper torrent streaming library. There's a bunch of these, but once we're done with those, we're going to be able to code it, which is great. And I'm going to build statically, like I showed there, against libtorrent, because that's the only way I, figure, I figured how to build it so it would work with libtorrent. Uh, so currently it's static, uh, which is fine by me, because it's cleaner in terms of uh, dependencies. And with these. So, yeah, now I have my dependency. So now I need to add two things. First, I need to add uh, libtorrent. So, libtorrent is written that way. Now, I'm not sure what's their syntax. I believe that's mm, like this. I don't think they're writing it this way. No, this way. And boost. What's the boost syntax? So like I said in a previous stream, uh, well, when you're getting a little bit of experience in coding, you end up spending more time naming stuff. Yeah, boost like that. You end, you end up spending more time naming stuff instead of coding. And that can be annoying. But you know that naming stuff properly is very important. You just know it. Because if you don't name things properly, they don't scale because you, it's impossible to build on them. Because it's just too confusing. Uh, anyway. So, yeah. It should be there. External boost slash 550. You know, something like that. And here it should be like, you know, um, the torrent 1.0. Uh, actually, 1.1. Yeah, like that. So, yeah. Now we need to copy paste to, to copy the good stuff. So here I'm copying VLC. We need to copy uh, libtorrent. And so, yeah. So maybe I'll end up uppercasing this. I'm not sure if it's uppercase or not. Actually, let me let me check on the on their GitHub. It's really important 
to respect the syntax, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. Deep torrent. Oh, is it the good one actually? No, I don't think that's the good one. I think that's the official one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, minimal, lowercase there. So yeah, let's keep lowercase because, you know, we want to keep the spirit, the naming convention spirit there. So here I'm going to... This should be simple to understand for, for, for non-coders out there. It's just a simple script, shell script, that is going to copy the file we need, the dependency we need in order to... To do some good stuff with it. Uh, so yeah, we need to copy... First of all, we need to copy the includes. Because if we don't know what's inside the library we're using, uh, how could we possibly do anything good with it? We need to understand the API of the library we're using. So yeah, if I do that, uh, I should be able to do something like... Um, whoops. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd be able to do something like... Hmm. You know what? Yeah. Why don't I rename them include... Hold on. Yeah, VLC 2.3.0 VK include. Yeah, I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to, to, to call it include and copy everything. So, here CP... Uh... EP, uh, CP recursive, everything that's inside of that, well, we want to copy it inside of our include folder. So, Psycho Coin Coin is asking, <laughs> am I mistaken or there is 100 megabytes of header file in libboost? You know what? That could be the case. Actually, I really need to check that. So there's probably a, a quicker command for doing it uh, in the in the terminal, but you know, since I didn't do that for a long time, I'm not sure what it is. Let me see. seriously, a hundred megabytes of file in there. That just can't be right. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to check all of them. There's got to be a um, oh, yeah. Hmm. If you know a command to extract uh, the biggest file, let me let me check it actually. Um, get the biggest file in a directory. Yeah, largest file. How to find the largest file in a directory? If you want to find and print the top largest file, you have to do that. Restrict the search to present that. Okay. Cool. Always useful. All right, let's do that. We're going to investigate, guys. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Just going there. Third party. Here, we should go to boost. 1.5. I need to rename that. I need to rename that. Hold on. Let me close all these actually. Uh, and this. Okay, so. Workspace, third party, boost. This is include. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, let's try this. I knew that the find command was useful. You know. So here it's probably, you know, if, you, if we want to understand what, haps, what happens there, it's probably going to find in the current directory and printf them, which is pretty, pretty much printing the files, printing the name of the files, uh, and then sorting them uh, with the sort function. So with a pipe redirecting this with a sort, and with two options, I'm not sure about that, and then head head is most likely used to display them properly or something like that. I'm not sure. But we're going to do that. And see how this goes. Uh, 
and as you can see it works really great oh, okay so what the f yeah so you know what guys that's what psycho coin coin said <laughs> I'm saying it in French because I know the guy is French, so... <laughs> Actually, most uh, viewers so far were named after animals. There's a guy called Chicken Skill, Chicken Skill, which is a uh, French too, and there's a guy called Psycho Coin Coin. So, you know, a duck and uh, a chicken. Interesting. But anyway, um, you know, if I go to type of there... Vector is supposed to be huge and it's only a 200 kilobyte. Seriously, what is what the fuck is that? Oh my god. I mean, yeah. That's it guys. That's a hundred megabyte freaking includes for boost. Now I can probably uh, remove a bunch of these. Uh, namely these that I'm not using so I think I'll, I'll take a look I'll take a, um, a, a look at that later because that's not the greatest thing to be done on stream so I'll do I'll do it I'll do the maintenance and by the way if you look uh, in my github right there um, for the past for, 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 for the past few days I did a bunch of stuff besides streaming you know, fixed a, bu a bunch of bugs and yeah, pretty much committing a bunch. If you're looking to, if you're looking in the in the graph there, if you look at the graph, be more accurate in English. Yeah, as you can see, I did a few things. But anyway, um, let's go back to what we were doing. And so, yeah, if it's like this uh hmm. i'm not sure why yeah i'm putting windows 32 there because it might be different on other platforms well currently like i said previously motion box is only working on windows and that's not and that's something i'm not cool with and so i would love it for i would love for it to work on linux and OSX, and uh, that's one of my top priority thing I want to do. There, uh, what we need to do there is this, um, you know, whoops. No, we don't need to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Need to do this, and we need to. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe that way, probably. So, LibTorrent should be copied this way. We also need, um, yeah, we also need boost. So boost, actually, what's the proper syntax for boost? <laughs> I think it's minus two, minus character. Now, boost. Now, it's up a B. It needs to be this way. So I believe, whoops. Uh, boost, plus plus. Yeah. Hmm. It's weird. Sometimes they uppercase it, sometimes they don't. On the logo they don't, for instance. Here they do, here they do. Yeah, they're not consistent in their naming. Come on, guys. Well, let's uppercase it, though. <laughs> As you can see, I'm worrying about a bunch of stuff. But that matters because we want to respect the feel that of the third party stuff we're using. We want to respect their naming convention. So obviously he's not going to be happy because I have a terminal open there. Yeah, 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 I know you're not happy. Okay, okay. Now, are you happy now? 
Yes, you are. Yep. Okay, okie dokie. Um, so yeah, this one. So, likely times, you know, just doing something like that. Being boost. And then we need to do something like that. And, uh, you know, pretty much copying the 100 megabytes of include. G. Yeah, I think to take a long time with that. And if we're on Windows, it's most likely going to be named this way. Um, boost, like that. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yep. Cool. Actually, it's just one. One there. Don't need uh, all of them. Okay. So, what this does is pretty much copying everything we need in the proper um, folders so that we can start work on them. Now, um, sorry about that, I just screamed in the mic. Uh, yeah, so now we should be able to extract, to, to copy and to deploy the dependency we need for our project. So let's do so. Uh, as you can see here, very simple usage there. So yeah, we can't learn Qt4 like I said, but Qt5 compile is fine, except I'm not using the cool feature of Qt5, namely Qt Quick 2.0. I'm still on the first version like I mentioned, but it's currently working great for motion box, so I'm not too eager to switch. I have other priority, but I already know that we're going to have to make the move from the traditional Qt, Qt Quick renderer that I'm using to the send graph they added, you know, pretty much a send graph for the for the new renderer in Qt Quick 2.0 to make it faster, hopefully faster, because who knows. Uh, but also a tad more complex for using traditional legacy QPainter stuff. But that's a little bit technical, let's run that. So he's copying everything. Most likely I'm not screwing up my repository there. <laughs> Uh, and as you can see, it takes a long time to copy boost. Seriously. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> like, took forever. I'm on an SSD there, and it took forever to copy all the boost header. So now, if we go to... Uh, yeah, to, to the workspace and just, you know, go to include, there should be a bunch of stuff there. And there isn't. Huh. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, so why? Oh, okay. Nah. Hmm. Okay. So maybe not named like that after all. Ah, uh, boost, boost, boost. So here I just messed up something, but it's okay. If we get back there, we should see in library though that we have boost there and most likely leap torrent. Where is it? Where are you leap torrent there? There it is. Okay, guys. So, uh, yeah. Let me, let me do a diff there. No, not a diff. Um, well, never mind. Let's just delete that. And let's run it again. Okay, so hold on. Yeah, leap to end and boost. The way it works. Hmm. Okay. So here I have to call that boost. Just like in VLC. Yeah. Old VLC in include. Hmm. Um Okay, maybe I'll fix that later anyway. So boost there. Don't. Yeah, let's call that leap don't. You know. 
une heure. Ok. Now. Let's run it again, baby. Um. Hmm. Hold on. Yeah. Here, I also need to fix my cleaning. One of the cool stuff with this configure is that it can clean it for you to clean the mess, you know, if you just want. Yeah, that's a problem. Clean folder, you can have it. Uh, yeah, so, you know, fairly simple, really. Like that. Don't want to mess it, that up, otherwise I could screw up my repository, which is not what we want. Um, so, you know, I'm very... I need to focus there. But yeah, should be good. Um, hold on, yeah, he's removing the entire library folder, so it's okay. Okay. Let's try again. Yeah, as you can see, to copy the boost header, you have the time to do a bunch of stuff while he's doing so. That's annoying. I need to fix that because I'm pretty sure I'm not using everything in boost. My god, boost gets so big. I mean, that's actually an issue. The very fact that LibTorrent is using the boost is quite a redundant of Qt that is already implementing a bunch of stuff that boost re-implements. So it's a bit of an overhead there. But that's the price to pay to use libtorrent, and I'm not too keen about writing a torrent library from the ground up. But maybe at one point it would be great to have that a torrent library from the ground up, built from the ground up, without the libtorrent library. Actually, let's look if it exists. The key torrent library. Maybe I could use that. But I don't think. Yeah. Even even Qt Bitorrent is using. Um, it's just using libtorrent because it works too well. Yeah. Libtorrent raster bar there. Okay. So, yeah, if we go there, there, get boost. We get boost, we get lip torrent. We go there, we get boost, we get lip torrent. Awesome. So now there should be a way for us to link to link against it. Uh so let's try to build it. Actually let's try to rebuild uh, hmm. No, let's not rebuild it. Let's leave it that way and Maybe... Yeah, and the torrent player there. Okay. So if I get back... Um, to my test that I did previously for torrents... Actually, I love that sound. That's a good old MIDI sound from the game Dune 2, which I really love. Um, the game was good, but the music was good also. Actually, the music from the first Dune 1 was even better. But anyway, um, Leap Torrent. Uh, yeah. Here I have a main. Let's open it. So here's a sample that I use for torrents. And there's a bunch of includes there, as you can see. Um, yeah. So here I'm declaring a handle, adding a torrent. So I'm not too fine about the convention there. They're calling session S yes. Yeah, a little too abstract for me. Oh, uh, so. You might know that track too, it's from Baldur's Gate. The extension actually, but you know, Baldur's Gate, very famous game. Very good game, 
before uh, Bioware began making some weird fantasy, crazy fantasy stuff. But let's not stop the debate here. Um, yeah, so here's the API. Yeah, so the main class is the session. Let's serve all the torrent. Construct a session, load session state, start extension, start DHD. There we are, guys. We had the blink of implementing torrent streaming in motion box. That's exciting. And there are things to keep in mind that we have to read. But for now, I forgot to put the little monkey there, my, my little avatar. But anyway, he is back. And, you know, I'm going, I'm going to do a small break. And when we come back, we'll start implementing it. Thank you for being here and stay tuned. And don't hesitate. If you have questions, put them in the chat. Thank you. And I'm back. Thank you very much for being here as I share <laughs> for the few first time actually already my development process uh, with you. I try to be as real as possible uh, beyond the fact that I'm, na I'm, a, I'm a native French guy, so I speak French most of the time. But beside that, I try to be as honest as I can. And actually when I'm coding most of the time I'm thinking in, in English. Or it's a mix of the two a little bit, of French and English. Uh, so, 
now we're on the blink of starting the torrent streaming on Motionbox, and so there's a bunch of things that we have to keep in mind. Um, I think it's not starting without explanation. Okay, so it looks like there's one component to keep in mind, which is sometimes torrents stop for no reason, and that's something we want to keep we want to keep track of because when you're playing a file, you want to make sure that it plays all the way. Make sure to keep track of the post state, your state, and the upload mode at the time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sounds good, sounds good. Alright, so we need to create a session. Because, hey, that's what is the main class of LibTorrent, so let's do that right away. I'm not sure if I can create it as a static. Yeah, looks like I can do that. Hmm. Let's try it out. Um, so... Now I'm going to do some proper coding. At last. <laughs> you know, so... Just, uh... Uh... Whoops. Uh, let me check the way I have did that in backend VLC. Yeah. Just put a bunch of variables there. You know what? Let's just call it session. I'm not good with that. Yeah, so what you're hearing in the back is a reorchestrated soundtrack of one of the best game ever. I'm interrupting my, my coding process just to mention that. Uh, a Link's Awakening, the very first Delta on Game Boy, if you have the occasion to play this one, I really believe still today it's a great adventure and uh, I mean this game is so memorable to me, maybe one time I'll explain why, but I think this game is one of the, the very best game I've ever played beside PC gaming. When I, when I started this game back in the days, I remember I had it for Christmas and the only thing I played before that was like Tetris and Super Mario. And then you get Zelda, and you get a full adventure like that, uh, which is, you know, on many levels, so deep. I mean, it's a deep game in, te in terms of mechanics, in terms of gameplay, in terms of story, but also in terms of emotion, it has a soul. I mean, it's a great game. So, possibly the best, to me, it's the best Zelda ever made. It's even better than all the others that followed, but I didn't play every one of them. But, I mean, it's a tremendous game. But anyway... Let's focus for a sec here, for a change. So, you know, um, I need to include that most likely because, hey, that's how we do. So it's going to be LibTorrent includes there. Um, so originally I wanted to put the, uh, the original Game Boy track on the background, but Honestly, the Game Boy MIDI um, sequencer is a little bit uh, rough for an ambiance soundtrack, so I decided to put the reorchestrated theme, even though it's not the original one. Uh, so, yeah, uh, what I do in backend VLC is most likely not this one. Um, this one, most likely having includes like that in private at the end, so yeah, just check it. I'm just checking the syntax there. So that should actually work. Does it? Hmm, hold on. So, yeah. Uh, session. Is there a session there? Yes, there is. Cool. All right. So, My keyboard is not really facing my hands, so I make a lot of mistakes. I need to fix that. Alright, so... Um, yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Like that. Should be enough for my file to figure out where is located our good friend LibTorrent. It should be enough. But... Yeah, you never know. So far so good, but I'm not using it though. 
Let me rebuild it though. Yeah. Hmm. What's up? Compile? No, it didn't. Where is the error? It does not name a type. Yeah, of course it doesn't. So, yeah. LibTorrent is using namespaces. And... I don't really like namespaces. <laughs> it's one of the features in C++ that I don't like, because to me... Why using namespaces? Well, it has lots of uses, but why using namespaces when you can name your stuff uniquely? Now, obviously, if you have a bunch of dependencies, there might be redundants there, so you might need them afterwards, but... Um, we'll see how we can do that, how we can cope with that, but... If I load the main here... Uh, is there a main for my test? Yeah, it's still there. But yeah, you can see namespace leap torrent. Instead... For now, and I think I'll do this. Uh, you know, it's a little bit longer, but I don't need to use the namespace. Yeah, so there we go. It builds. There's a bunch of warning. Uh, yeah, because it's doing some stuff. Locally defined, but not used. These warnings are not very important. Uh, maybe I could disable them, or maybe I could do something about them, but... Let's don't focus too much about that for, for now. So, here, when I'm instantiating a um, backend to one player, it's going to create a session right away. Maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I only want to create the session when I'm loading a source. Who knows? Uh, but for now, I'm going to do it that way, I believe. Because it's okay. Um, yeah, and so... What it does now, next, is having some parameters, and then adding a torrent. So as you can see, and that's something that really surprises me, the libtorrent API is really simple. I mean, it's super straightforward. It's like... You create a session, you add a torrent, and boom, you connect to some, uh, most likely to some, you know, some alerts in, in its loop. And uh, yeah, it's just going to notify you when something comes up. And uh, that's cool. That's good news, actually. So we can, we can start doing something there. For instance, here, um, you know, there's a, a, a parameter there and a safe path. So, I could do that, really simple, which is, whoops, this, this, uh, and this. You know, and then, Include. So for some reason, deep torrent includes our HPP, and I'm not sure why is that. I probably need to investigate. Okay, understand why they do that. Uh, they do that to differentiate headers that are written for C code. So when it's C, it's header H. And when it's CPP, it's header HPP, to say it's an HPP header. It's a, it's a C++ header, if you want. Uh, yeah, 
I want to, the user to differentiate what headers are in C++. So you need to do that when you're using both the C and C++ in a project. I don't need to because I'm using C++ only. Even though, like I said previously, I'm coding in C++ with a very simple philosophy, very close to what I learned when I did C at school. I think that's the best way to use it. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think that's the best way to use it. Use very simple stuff, very simple C++ feature. And don't use advanced stuff, keep it simple. Um, I think it's the best way to do it. Uh, yeah, so this needs to go first. You know, I'm just remembering my syntax because I haven't touched these for a long time. And now this should work. But it doesn't. So here I'm not going to display warning because I want to focus on errors. So here is not happy because the URL is a string. And so he wants to see it. Um, he, he obviously is not going to support uh, it. So what, what I can do there is is do this, which is essentially converting that to local 8 bits. But maybe we don't want to do that. I'm going to check what I'm doing on the VLC player side of things. Because if it works on that side, that should be okay. So yeah, I'm doing input and I'm, yeah, I'm doing that. It should be okay. Yeah. And it compiles. Awesome. So now... Um... Yeah, there's a bunch of things we need to do. Um, but first, we need to... Specify a directory, obviously. So, what is going this... What the... Yeah, what path are we going to use? I think I know that. Hmm. Okay. Let's try that though. Oh, uh, hold on. Yeah. Okay. So here, I need to tell him where to save it. She sounds very logical, so I could do that for now. But I'm not too keen about that. So if I go into my controller. I have a very specific way of handling controller in uh, in SkyKit. Controller are pretty much global classes that I can call at any time with uh, a public interface that lets me do a bunch of stuff. And uh, it's, very, it's a very convenient way to work because it's pretty much um, reintroduce what you are able to do in C, which is in C, what's great in C that you can call any function at any time. And in C++, when you're encapsulating everything in objects, sometimes you're screwed. Sometimes you want to call some kind of option for some kind of function, but it's like buried inside, a, you know, a very complex object. With controllers, that's very cool because what I can do is I can do like controller file, and then I can call uh, path storage, for instance, and so I can invoke uh, the controller from any point in my C++ code. What's really great about that is that not only can I invoke them anywhere in my code, but I can also encode, uh, invoke it invoke the controllers inside of a QML file. So for instance, if I'm doing this, um, I'm not sure if I'm using it this in QML. No, I'm not using it, it, this in QML, but uh, actually, maybe I do. Yeah, I do. Okay, but here you can see that in my QML files, which are using pretty much as the front specification, the front end you could say, even though I hate that word. Pretty much used to define, if I hate it, let's not use it though. Pretty much to define the, um, the guide user interface. I'm using QML mostly for that. Even though the interface relies on C++ code and low level components are in C++, all of them. But you, you're able to code, you're able to call the controller from a QML function there directly and so it's going to call the C++ function and you're going to get all the performance and it's going to be great and everybody's happy you know so you're sure you're not 
calling some kind of weird JavaScript implementation that might break. You're calling rock solid C++ code. So that's convenient, you know. And you can call it at any point, whether it's C++ or QML. But yeah, um, going back to my controller file here, I need to most likely to, to do that. So there's going to be a path storage. Uh, and my path storage is pretty much where everything is located. Um, and so there's actually an easy way to look at the path storage. Let me show you that right now. Um, you, you can actually look at your storage folder directly from Motionbox in a very easy fashion. Click there and click on content there. And that is the path storage there. So here, what I'm probably going to do is most likely add a new entry inside of the cache. Um, you know, like cache torrent, most likely. But to do that, I probably need to create the folder. Do I? Maybe not. Not sure what's indexed though. Oh, nah, that's... Yeah, okay. So, okay. If we go back... So this is important because this is the, the place where the torrent are going to be stored. And we want to be extremely careful about that because maybe we want to keep some of them for caching purposes. Or maybe at one point we'll let the user download them. So, you know important to keep track of that uh yeah so here i'm setting the path storage in the controller of motion box and then yeah that's the way i do it okay so currently we're going to do it in a very dirty way but it's okay because i would clean that code anyway sooner or later so it doesn't include, um, yeah. Yeah. We need that. Oops. Uh, controller file. Yeah, that's the good one. And we need the path storage, baby. That's not the proper way to do it because the path storage might change. And so if it changes, we have to adapt. And right now we don't. So that's the reason why this implementation is no, is no good. Um, we probably need to fix it anyway. So the path would be this. Oops, sorry. This plus something like that, you know. Um, okay. Hmm. We are going to have to act. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's go back to our testing main that we had here. Yeah, um, we want the path storage to be set. That's important. Like that. Maybe he's not going to be a big fan of the storage of the path itself. Maybe I'll have to convert it to some generic Windows way of displaying it. We'll see how torrent copes with that. I'll leap to uncoops with that. But we know that... Uh, yeah. Hold on a sec. So here is setting the source. Hmm. Yeah. There's the source, though. So... The problem here is... Let me check that. You had torrent through the add torrent function where you give object with all the parameters. The add torrent overload will block until the torrent has been added or failed to be added. And now it turns an error code and a torrent handler. In order to add torrent, we should consider use async add torrent. 
which returns immediately without waiting for the turn to add. Yeah, that's what we want to do. We don't want, because, why do we want to do that? Because this is, we are on, in our main loop there, the main loop here. Now, if we block in the main loop, we're going to freeze the application. So we need to call a function that is non-blockable, namely this one. Um, and it returns a handle. So, yeah, it returns a handle. Sounds very cool. So, here I have my session, and I can probably do. Do I have the completion there? Yeah. Awesome. Apparently, there is only one function called async, which is if we go back in the API there. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. It's very cool. I mean, documentation is really cool. Very simple. So, yeah. Huh. So supposedly we're supposed to start a bunch of stuff here. Yeah. And we need a loop. Hmm. That might be an issue. Yeah, that might be an issue. Which is the following symbol. I'll explain why in a sec. That might be an issue. Like synopsis, yeah. So if libtorrent requires a loop, like it seems to be the case there, because there are alerts handled that way, well in that case we're going to, we need to have a thread or torrent streaming. We're going to need to have a thread, a threaded approach. And um, I think, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. And that's a bit of an, of an annoyance. Um, let me think about that for a sec. So, let me think out loud. Um, so, if it needs a loop, now first we need to make sure that it needs a loop. Let's look at other symbols. Yeah. So, I look there, look there, and I look at examples. Let's let's browse a bunch of, you know, um, warrant examples. Uh, what seems to be consistent. Then again, I'm not sure. So this is the one we implemented previously. If you look there, yeah, you can see that the way motion uh, the way motion works, the way libtorrent works, is fairly simple. What it does is it pretty much starts a bunch of stuff. You know defining where the torrent is going to be saved and so on. And then, you know, is just doing a while, an infinite loop, if you will, which is probably break at one, broke at one point. Yeah, with a go-to. By the way, I don't like go-to. <laughs> that needed to be mentioned. But yeah, they do a go-to to pretty much shutting down the stuff. Um, yeah. What you're hearing in the back is um, the soundtrack from the game Diablo 2 and uh, it's, the it's the desert song, uh, village song. And, um, you know, I remember I was playing that game when I was in, vac in vacation, in the holidays. What was very great about this game is that it wasn't very beautiful at the time. It wasn't a very beautiful game, but it was running very well. That was also the case, that was also the case for StarCraft. Back then, Blizzard was not doing some pretty games. I mean, besides their cinematics, the game themselves were not very pretty, but they were running very efficiently. They were working great. And I remember I was playing Diablo 2 on vacation, and this ambiance sound soundtrack stayed with me the whole vacation. It was magical. I felt like I was transported into another world. 
And very few games successfully do that, and Diablo was one of these. Which is funny when you consider the fact that most of the gameplay of Diablo is extremely redundant. You just kill monster over and over again and you get and you go back to the village having a sense of accomplishment by you know finding some new items which are mostly the same items that you found previously except the stats are different now i'm simplifying a bunch here but that's pretty much what happens basically mm. but yeah the game was really great because it has it had that replay value even though you were doing the same thing over and over and over again Something happened that made it replayable. And so, it's great stuff. Actually, I think I'm going to express a few memories that I had as a young gamer in that stream because, you know, it feels good to, to express that, to share those. And maybe you know, but previously, maybe you don't know, but previously I was... I started and uh, was the community manager that of a website that I built that was called Wire Labs. And this game was focusing on retro retro PC gaming and it was great stuff and I couldn't continue it because it was taking too much time and it was too hard to maintain but maybe one time I'll get back to my I'll get back to something related to retro gaming I'm not sure I want to go forward now though but instead of focusing on the retro good stuff but yeah uh, so here is a complex client test but is there a loop that's my question for you Hmm, doesn't seem to. So, where's the main in that? There it is! Okay, so what's that? Huh. Looks like it's a very simple client. Yeah? Whoa. Yeah. Okay. There it is. So, okay. We've successfully identified by looking at the sample, the concrete sample of Liptoen, that we need a loop. Without a loop, we're not going to be able to process the Liptoen messages. So that means that Motionbox is going to have a new thread. Thread in which torrents are running. Now, I have... I could do that differently. I, I could use the same thread that I'm already using, for instance, for VLC. Uh, no, I could not use that. No, I need to thread it. I just need to thread it. Yeah, there's going to be a specific thread for torrent-involved stuff. And actually, I'm beginning to think that I'm going to need a controller that starts the thread, that, that starts the thread, and that can handle multiple connections. Now, one of the things that annoys me is that uh, m what happens if I have multiple backend torn player running simultaneously? I don't want a thread for each of those. I want just one thread. That's the reason why I'm probably going to have to create a controller torrent, which is pretty much the, the backbone of my torrent implementation. And so, you know, just like I already created, if you look at controller media, controller media is pretty much, you know, if I'm not mistaken, starting a thread somewhere? Oh uh, yeah, right there. And so that thread is, yeah, just going to be um, where all the media retrieving stuff happens. You know, that's pretty much what happens. So yeah, hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to create the controller right now because if, because it feels like it. So let's do it. Um, it would be it, it will do a little bit of coding for a change. Okay, uh, I'm going to insp to draw inspiration from this. So let me open a new window there and let me go to workspace, SRC and torrent. There we need pretty much this. Uh, actually, that's controller. So we need this. And we need most likely something like that. And here, I'm going to rename these. Controller Toran, baby. That's the way we roll. 
Okay. Like that. Okay. Now. Whoops. If I go there. Yeah, controllers are at the top. I'm going to do that too. Stay torn there. Um, okay. So actually, what I'm going to do though is... Maybe I want to commit that first. Yeah, I'm going to do a commit with that. Uh, so... Let's not call that just yet. Let's try to compile that. And let's do a diff on it. So there's warning, but we don't really care about these right now. Um, once again, if you have any questions related to torrents or motion box, don't hesitate to shoot them in, a, in the chat. If for some reason it's too late or I have to leave, I'll make sure to answer them the next time we log in, I log in, which will be on next uh, Tuesday, most likely. Uh, so here, we're going to do a little bit of Git, which is what I use for source control management, since the code is, on, is mirrored on GitHub. You know, you can retrieve everything on this. And here we can see that we did a bunch of things. Um, yeah, we did, a, we did a bunch of things. And actually... Hmm. Looks like my my change in Lipton doesn't appear. Why is that? Hold on, something is wrong there. Looks like I didn't add the proper file. Um, it's weird. Um, oh, shoot! Not the way I'm supposed to do that. Actually, let's not do that right away. Media are there, so in media there should be... Okay, two backends. Okay, hmm. Um, yeah, so... Oh shoot. I actually never committed... Media player. Hmm. Huh. That's weird. Okay, I forgot to do that. Um, yeah, funny stuff. Okay. Hmm. Never mind, we'll fix that. So, yeah, so, um, let's commit what we did there, which is essentially. In configure the configure script, we've added uh, leap torrent and boost. That's what we did, didn't we? But we didn't just do that, we also did. We also change the torrent. Um, so yeah, torrent. Pretty much did the same. So I guess I could do that. Um, Let me check if I already used that syntax before to see if it's turned on or not. Yeah, I don't think I did it. Hmm. Can I do that? I wonder if that syntax would be valid. Mm. No, I don't think I used that before. Let me check. Mm. So here, what I'm trying to figure out is how to write commits properly so that it's readable for others. 
And so I don't think that I'm doing multiple. Yeah. Never mind. You know what? Let's do something like this. It's pretty convenient and uh, because, you know, that's what I did really. I added Liptoan both in configure and both in the project. Really what I did. And so we're going to commit it as if, as is. And maybe I'll edit, uh, you know, maybe I'll edit the commit message later. So, yeah, simplify it for the sake of being readable. Actually, hmm. yeah, let's commit it. Okay, so that's that. Now, uh, you know what? I actually need to. Yeah. I actually need to commit that before implementing anything here. So I'm trying to do proper commits because it's, it's important to, to maintain and to scale your code. But here, what I forget to do last time, it's probably very busy doing something else. I forget to add backend to one player. By the way, the naming convention here might evolve. I'm not sure. We'll see. Now I'm adding it. Um, I'm not sure if I didn't add that, I probably didn't add the includes either. So we have to do that too. Or maybe I did. No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't do that. What the f... What the f... <laughs> okay, so... Yeah. Should have been added though. Let me review again. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, created backend to one player. Create. Yeah, cool, but if you don't commit the file, yeah, that won't cut it. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Never mind. So, yeah, there should be nothing to div here, obviously, but probably a bunch of new files. I'm not sure how to display new files with the git, if anyone knows that. Uh, don't hesitate to put it in. Yeah, actually, let me open a new terminal there. To make sure that I'm not screwing this up. Git commit. Yeah, so what I do when I forget something in a commit is this. Pretty much do that. And a 2 there. So... That's pretty convenient to, to say, hey, whoops, forgot something. Check the two commits that are related. I, f I found it to be readable that way. Uh, hold on. Let me adjust my keyboard there. Yeah. Okay, so here. Uh, yeah, as you can see, a bunch of stuff were committed. Hmm, actually. Yeah, I can... I committed the includes, but not the files themselves. Cool. Okay. Okay, good. Hmm. Hmm. So now, I guess we can proceed to the next uh, step. Oh, by the way, I think I commit uh, session there. Yeah, never mind. It's okay. Not very accurate, but... Um, it's okay. Um, now I need to create a controller. I need to create the controller now. So let's go back to that. So here is the place where I'm supposed to do it. I'm going to open a new window. I'm going to go there, and there, and there. Mm. Controllers. Like this. And we're going to call it controller torrent. This is going to be the controller in responsible for everything related to torrents, whether it's streaming, downloading, or anything. And it's it's going to be cool because it's going to implement a thread so that we can access and download torrents 
brilliantly, smoothly. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. Now I need to implement it like so. Um, yeah. Like that. Um, so this needs to be fixed. Replace. Am I in the good place? Yeah, I'm in the good place. Once again, like previously. Uh, yeah. I'm going it this way. And then... Like this. So... We're going to replace media by torrent, obviously. There are two. And there are two. Here we go. Now. Let me just adjust this, the header. So, like I said in the previous stream, I like copy paste and renaming files, mostly because I am the, the way that I develop is mostly iteration. So I iterate from one from one piece of code to the other. So I'm copy pasting a lot, obviously, and when I'm copy pasting stuff, it reminds me what I did previously and so I can start iterating and maybe figuring out what I did wrong and fix it and then I'm fixing it for two for, for, for both of the files and so you know it makes things better hopefully so here I can remove that I need to define there and so yeah I probably need to remove a bunch of stuff there so I don't need media reply obviously I need controller media yeah like that uh Nope, not it. Oh, actually, controller. For instance, here I think, uh, yeah. For instance, I didn't remember I was using these. Shouldn't be used. But anyway, uh, let's check the way I syntaxly write these. Yeah, just like that. Okay, with the instance there and forward declaration there. Okay, so we're going to re to rename that. Torrent. Like that. Make sure that it's the, it's the proper name. It's most likely going to imply a bunch of bunch of replays there. Yeah. Okay. Now, whoops. There too. Now I could do a template to do that faster, but if I do that, I'm 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 going to end up changing the template every every once in a while because I'm I keep evolving in my design there. So not the best idea. So we're most likely going to need this. And this, uh, and uh, yeah, just in it. We'll see about the rest later. Uh, signals not likely. Private. We need that. We need to declare the controller. This we don't need currently. Or do we? Hmm. Nah, don't need. Well, we do if there's none here. Yeah. Okay, let's keep that. Uh, here. Okay. Don't need that. Don't need that. Need that. We don't need a destructor, we just need in it like there. Yeah, we probably need a thread, like I mentioned before. We're going to keep that. Um. Yeah. 
need to be protected like this. Now, here, where we need that. Um, don't need anything there. I take variables, I don't care. Okay, cool. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Should be this way. Yeah. No destructor currently. Whoops. Yep. Yeah. Okay. He needs... Should be a thread there. Yeah. Okay. Private function. None of these currently. Whoops. Yeah, control torrent should be like this. We initialize it there. Or do we? Yeah, we do. So torrent have a little uh, controller have, have a little special way of, init of initializing. Of initializing. That's a tough word to do. Tough word to say. Um, we need to call like a macro, which pretty much creates both the controller as a global, and uh, you know. Make sure that the instance, because it's a single ton, so it means that there's only one object like this, pretty much, simple, simply. Because yeah, we don't want thousands of controllers; we just want one, and that's one of the cool thing about it. It's a global class that I can call anywhere, and I know that it's a single ton, so I know that when I'm calling controller network, for instance, it's going to be the central core for everything related to networking. When I'm calling controller file, I know that it's going to do stuff related to files. And the cool thing about that is that, for instance, if, you know, um, I'm renaming or getting or creating a bunch of files, the controller makes sure that it's not going to overhead the, the application and that it's not going to slow it down. It just process them elegantly through uh, the, underlying, the underlying design that I did for file extracting, writing and reading. And that's cool because, you know, you want uh, the controller to also to, to make sure that what you're doing with the technology, you do it consistently and efficiently. And so sometimes it's, inter it's interesting not having a distributed vision, but having a centralized one, uh, at least to make sure that the distributed action are done well. And that's what the controller are, are, are here for, partly. So, yeah, this should should hopefully compile it really should you know what let's put less depressing music well fallout might be depressing though this one is a little bit too yeah actually i like this one anyway um so now we need to do, like I said previously, we need to generate the includes. What that means is that, um, you know, have a, a generate here, which is going to generate everything we need in order to include that file into the whole, the entire application, which is convenient because, you know, so here's the controller torrent. Uh, do you want to reload that? Yeah, we want. And there we go. So now I should be able to compile that, to build that, at least. And probably that my session is going to end up, my torrent session is most maybe going to end up here, most likely. There's going to be only one session per application, so I think. Maybe I'll change that, who knows? We'll see. But for now, I think that's the proper way to do it. One session for everybody, and then we try to figure this out. So, as you can see here, it's going to start the spread. Uh, but I also need to stop it. 
Hold on. And to stop a thread is a little bit tedious sometimes. You have to wait for it and quit it. So for now, I'm not going to implement any of these. We'll do that most likely in the next stream. Uh, yeah, because I want to do that properly. So now it's just an empty file, empty files. So let me check that the syntax is okay there. Yeah. Uh, torrent. There. Cool. So now we can add our famous controller. There it is. And let's commit it. Uh, hold on. Why is there so many? Yeah. Supposed to be this way. Okay. Hmm. Hold on. No, like that. Okay. So. Now we have the controller in our tree view there. Cool. So let's rebuild that. We have a bunch of warnings, as usual. Okay. So let's commit that. need to be done this way hmm okay I'm just taking the, the syntax here I'm supposed to include hmm. okay no no I'm mistaken here okay so I don't need that this is when you have we need to in to include the mock here which is the file generated by QMake we need to include that when we have defined in the CPP file a Q object if you search for the for files doing that, for instance in controller file here, you've seen that I've included that. So here we don't need to, by the way. But here I've implemented this. And the reason why I did that is most likely because here, yeah, we have a bunch of objects. And so if I don't do that, then QMake when he's generating files is not going to, to inspect these files and generate the proper code here. So we need to tell QMake, hey, you know what? You should really uh, check this file, or you should, we should include the mock here, so that we have the proper uh, definition for our QObjects classes. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but yeah, that's what it is. So here we don't need that. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward code here. So we're on the skate torrent. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I could do a template though. Controllers and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um Whoops. Nope. Uh nope.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we need to we need to add everything. We need to add that. And we need to add everything there. Cool. Now hopefully I didn't forget anything. Uh yeah. Oh yeah, that's the player that forgot to commit, but now we need to commit. Our good friend controller torrent. That's the way to do it. There we go. So now let's check. Yeah, the include is there. And the SRCs are there. So there should be a bunch of stuff there. There we go. So now, you know, uh, This should be good enough. So, there's one last thing that we need to do, most likely before I end the stream. Uh, but before I do, let me know in the comments if you have anything to ask. And if you don't, we'll just wrap this up. Once again, thank you very much for being here and for listening me while I'm coding uh, Motion Box. It's very... Um, I'm very happy about it and it's very important to keep uh, the energy high and my moral high because when you're developing something on your garage or on your living room or anywhere really, uh, it's difficult sometimes to find the motivation. And I think that um, it's an issue that lots of developers are having out there. Sometimes what you're doing can be boring and even worse, depressing. And so I think depression is something that happens when you are developing something on your own. It's, uh, you know, it happens. And so I think it's very important. Depression may, might be a strong word, that being said. But it's very important to keep a high energy and sharing what you're doing, even your failure, uh, to me, is really cool. So, yeah. Um, I'm very happy to do that. And, you know, I'm doing it for you as much as I do for myself, I guess. Mm. But yeah, thank you Evan Goon, uh, by the way. <laughs> thank you for your kind words. And thank you for being here. I know it's very early in the morning and so I'm happy for you guys to be here with me. It's very supportive and you know I'm longing a lot so it's uh, it's uh, it's very kind of you of being here. So yeah. Let's um, let's do the last thing I want to do. What is what is do Oh, so there's a question from Psycho Coin Coin. What is doing uh, um, the A option in git commit? So A option should be commit all. But maybe it's a default now. I was using git a long time ago and we needed to do uh, all to commit everything. So it's pretty much commit everything that I, that I changed. Uh, yeah, it's there. I don't want to. I want to commit everything. But you know, automatically add changes from all known file. It's pretty much the auto switch that commits everything. Yeah, it's very early. It's like uh, now. It's like uh, <laughs> midnight almost. Well, it's midday for normal people, but for programmers who are used to work at night, I was used to do that. But now that I'm a father, I cannot do that anymore that's not possible but yeah it's very early it's not default no i think hold on by using the a switch sometimes you end up using thing without really you know remembering what it does by using the a switch with the commit command to automatically add changes from all known file yeah that's what i want all files that are already listed in the index and to automatically rm files in the index that have been removed from the working tree and then perform the vacuum commit okay so if I delete a file that was previously added in the in the git, into git, uh, it's going to see it and it's going to remove it. It's very convenient. So normally, I think that I don't need to call git rm on a file, and it should figure out that it's been removed. But most of the time, I call git rm anyway. 
because I want to be very precise with what I do with, with Git. So maybe I don't need to call the A switch. I don't know. But anyway, let's... Um, I'll dig into that later. Let's finish this. So in my controller core now, by the way, let me check that everything is committed there. Yeah, we're on, we're on a clean state and let me check that we're on a clean slate on motion box too. Yeah, it's okay. So now I need to go on motion box, on the motion box side of things. And I need to make sure that we can actually instantiate uh, our good friend controller torrent. Um, so normally there's a, a point where I declare controllers and it's there. And here, uh, we have the controller media already. And we need to do, not torrent, but torrent, like that. And so, yeah, uh, if we look at the controller, yeah, it should be there. Let's put it there. Now, this should compile. And this should create some great stuff. By the way, I'm almost hitting the <laughs> the three hours mark for the stream. A little less, actually. So it's been a long stream. Maybe I'm going to <laughs> wrap this up real quick, real soon, because... Okay, so now we have an issue. Yeah, because now we're actually trying to compile them thing, and obviously I forgot a few things. You know, always nice to test things. So he's not happy because there's an incomplete class here, controller private. Uh, why is that? Yeah. I know why. So we're going to fix that. Um, hmm. Actually, yeah. So the way it works is we're supposed to. Let me check controller declarative, for instance, here. Yeah. We need that. Obviously. If we don't include that. It's not going to compile. So to recap a little bit here, what I'm doing is pretty much um, dividing my classes between what's private and what's public. And the reason why I do that is because I want my public header to be as clean as possible. I don't want to have public variable, uh, private variables displayed there. I don't want the common user that's going to use my API to see them. I want them to be a little more buried to make things clearer inside of a inside my private implementation, if you want, inside of the private class. And so it makes things clearer and also preserve binary compatibility, but I'm not going to go through that. And uh, yeah, so everything private is going to be there. Every function, every every private stuff is going to be there. So when somebody uses my, my API, he won't care about that. He will only care about the public header, uh, which is this one. And I just hit F3, I'm not sure what it does. Okay. So here, there should be we should be in a better situation now. Oh, we are. We are. So now I created a bunch of stuff today, but didn't code much implementation. That's what happened uh, in a, in every once in a while. But yeah, we need to create basic stuff before we can really implement the good stuff. So here, I have a controller torrent that is most likely going soon to instantiate a thread. And inside that thread, every single torrenting good stuff will happen. The good thing about that too is that, you know, it will just do its thing. And, you know, if it needs performance and stuff like that, it just do it threaded. And if something crashes or if there is an issue there, I can just, uh, you know, uh, focus on adjusting that inside of the thread, inside of instead of freezing the whole application. Which is good, you know, you don't want your application to freeze for no reason or for external reason. So it's always great to have a threaded approach when you're using external stuff. Now, that being said, I have a few thread already in Motionbox, so I'm a little bit worried I might end up using too much thread, but so far so good. Especially since VLC, for instance, is using threads inside of, it, of its thread, so it's doing, it's doing a lot of threads. And uh, it's difficult to say threads, by the way. So yeah, so let's get back here. And if we get back here, we'll notice that, yeah, the last commit wasn't so great because we forgot that. So how can we do that? Well, there's an easy way to do that. Let me do a git reset. That command there, whoops. If I don't mess it up, 
is the command to say, you know what, the previous commit was not so great. Reset it. That should be working. And so now, if I show that, yeah, we're back to the create back to torrent player, which is the previous commit that I did. So now I can commit it again. That's a neat trick for fixing when you still can access the torrent, though. Uh, the, the commit. So here I can commit that again. Uh, I should be able to do it. Like this and so yeah i've recommitted everything and now you'll see that um we got the proper include here in the commit so the commit is cleaner and that's what we want in motion box we have that so yeah um hmm Weird. I didn't do that. Okay. Oh. First of all, I did a mistake there. Okay, I will need to fix that. So, I did a mistake because I need to specify that it's SkyKit there. Here, I need to specify it too. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, let me get back to my GitHub page there. Hmm, never mind. I'll just add it. Just added the controller torrent to motion box there, which is not that, a, which is not a big change, but for the sake of completeness, yeah, maybe I don't want to add that. It's not so interesting. Yeah. Well, I'll keep it, and I think about that later. So now, I'm just going to commit that. Once again with the DA option. And we're going to do that. And then we'll probably wrap wrap it up. Uh because it's uh It's midday already. It's lunchtime. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Alright. That does it. So, is it building? If it builds, I guess we're gonna go home. <laughs> yeah, it seems to. We haven't checked if it's running, you know. Sometimes it's building, but it crashes, so... Yeah. It seems to be working. Okay. Well... Thank you everybody for uh, following that fifth episode of uh, Coding Motion Box. I'm very happy for you guys to be here and uh, you know, uh, I'll see you guys on the most likely on next Tuesday. Uh, meanwhile, take very good care of you. If you're yourself a programmer, don't forget to take some good time uh, for you and take good care of you. Thank you very much for everything and let's wrap it up.